Scientists have taken the first photographs of a worrying new crack in one of Greenland's largest glaciers. The rift was spotted while researchers were examining satellite data from the Peterman Glacier. The crack is raising concerns that part of the floating ice shelf could break off into the ocean. The images were captured by scientists with the NASA field campaign Operation Ice Bridge. The glacier moves toward the sea along the northwestern coast of Greenland, terminating in a huge floating ice tongue. Researchers are keeping a close eye on it as they believe it holds back a foot of potential sea level rise from the Greenland ice sheet. Like other glaciers that end in the ocean, it periodically calves icebergs. A massive iceberg, or ice island, broke off of the Peterman Glacier in 2010. Nearly two years later, another chunk of ice broke free. Another crack has been found stretching towards the center of Peterman's ice shelf, according to the Washington Post. Last week, Stifler Mint, a researcher at Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, said a second new crack is appearing in the middle of the ice shelf. As far as I understand, the island might not break off until later this summer or even next summer, he told Mail Online. As this part of the ice shelf is already floating the break off of the island will not affect sea level rise, I e. floating ice and water have exactly the same volume. But understanding the glacier response on the longer term is important as it holds back a large amount of ice from the Greenland ice sheet. If it continues to grow, it could join up with the initial crack and cross the entire ice shelf. There may be still be hope for the shelf, according to NASA. A medial flow line in the ice could have a stagnating effect on the newer rift, helping to slow its advance, scientists with Operation Ice Bridge said on Facebook. Lermit said a possible cause for the crack might be ocean forcing, a phenomenon that happens when warm ocean waters melt the ice from underneath. In its in-depth report, the Washington Post asked several researchers if the crack could cause a larger break in the ice shelf. Andreas Munchell, a University of Delaware oceanographer who studies Peterman, told the Post, this could be a big deal that may lead to a third breakup, but it probably will not happen until later this summer. Jason Box, a professor with the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland said it could lead to an ice island around 50 to 70 miles in size. Earlier this month, it was revealed that Greenland's glaciers and ice caps have passed a tipping point and are no longer able to regrow lost ice. The proverbial tipping point was passed in 1997, when coastal meltwater was filled to its capacity. Researchers predict that the subsequent melting of Greenland's coastal ice will raise global sea levels by about 1.5 inches by 2100. The study was conducted by researchers at Ohio State University, who looked at the glaciers and ice caps that dot the edges of the Greenland coast. Twenty years ago, the island passed a tipping point, meaning the smallest glaciers and ice caps on the coast are no longer able to regrow lost ice. The findings reveal exactly why the most vulnerable parts of Greenland ice are melting so quickly, the deep snow layer that normally captures coastal meltwater was filled to capacity in 1997. That layer of snow and meltwater has since frozen solid, meaning all new meltwater flows over it and out to sea. Fortunately, the findings only apply to a fairly small amount of ice along the coast, and not the Greenland ice sheet the second biggest ice cache in the world. Dr. Ian Howitt, to lead the study, said, these peripheral glaciers and ice caps can be thought of as colonies of ice that are in rapid decline, many of which will likely disappear in the near future. In that sense, you could say that they're doomed. However, the ice sheet itself is still not doomed in the same way. The vast interior ice sheet is more climatologically isolated than the surrounding glaciers and ice caps. Also, since this tipping point was reached in the late 90s before warming really took off, it indicates that these peripheral glaciers are very sensitive and, potentially, ephemeral relative to the timescales of response of the ice sheet. If Greenland's coastal ice melted at once, global sea levels would rise a few inches. In comparison, if the whole Greenland ice sheet melted at once, sea levels would rise by 7 meters. The problem lies in a layer of snow called the Fjorn, which lies between fresh surface snow and the ice. 
Normally, meltwater drains through gaps in the ferrin down to the ice surface. But when the ferrin became saturated in 1997, it froze through. Since then, there haven't been any gaps to capture meltwater, and the ice hasn't been able to grow. They found that, for the last 20 years, mass loss has been exactly equal to the amount of meltwater runoff loss to see, with a frozen ferrin the most likely cause. The researchers have warned that the Greenland ice sheet is subject to the same danger, though to a lesser degree that the edge ice.